Hello, everybody. So I would like to get the second part of the panel to the stage. We also have some American guests here to also show the, share the perspective from the United States. Uh, so the first person I want to call to the stage is my godfather or grandfather, whichever one, both. Uh, Archie Burnett. Oh, no. Deborah saying timeout. I chose the wrong moment. Timeout. Okay, we'll be back. So I'll start with the other two panelists of tonight, yes. Um, or do, do we need like a two minute break? Is everybody okay? We don't have time for a two We don't have time for a two minute break. So I'm just gonna continue. So yeah, we're very proud to have to, two American house members here tonight from the iconic house of Saint Laurent. We're celebrating our 40th uh, anniversary with this house that was founded in 1982, yes. Mm. So yeah, it's just unbelievable uh, stepping into this legacy after starting as a local German house, yeah, um, to then transitioning into this, I would have never imagined. But once I thought, okay, the house of Melody has to change, I went to one, I said, I need to be in a house that you're in. So most of you know by the name, he was a lawyer, but he was also Saint Laurent. Cause he was like, I'm not gonna leave, I'm gonna be in both houses or in none. Cause both of these houses are my family, yeah? Cause there was the, the board members from House of Saint Laurent, uh, House of Valor, that kind of rebirthed the House of Saint Laurent. So these are all family to one. So I would like to welcome Keo Saint Laurent to the stage, yes. I would like to welcome Sebastian Saint Laurent to the stage. And is Archie back yet? Almost, okay, we'll start um, already anyway. So thank you for joining us today. I know this must uh, also be emotional for you guys. Um, so I appreciate uh, sharing also with us and also to be able to find out a bit more about the American side, what he did in um, America, and how it, oh, there he is, Archie. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Keo, I'm gonna start with you. Start with Sebastian, I'm gonna start with you. <laughs> <laughs> I should know. <laughs> uh, so I think first question is similar, like when and how did you meet Juan Alor? And what was kind of significant, significant about your time together at Alor? Or Saint Laurent, either one. Okay, uh, good afternoon, good night, I guess, everybody. <laughs> I am not a great like public speaker, I'm very shy. You can't tell when I walk balls, but I'm very shy. Um, I met Vaughn in 1998. Um, I was actually in the house of Rodell at the time, which is uh, another less known American house. Um, Vaughn was always the DJ when we started the scene in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And he would always tell me like, child, what are you doing in that house? Like you were bigger than that house. So later on, I moved to LA and I met Arnold Allure, which is like my mentor in ballroom. And so that's how Vaughn and I actually got in the same house. It's through Arnold, even though Vaughn was the first person that said that he saw me for the house, but because I moved away and made friends with Arnold, I joined through Arnold. So Vaughn, um, like I said, we met in 98. And we were always like, Vaughn is the type of person, you don't have to talk to Vaughn every day, every week, but he is like, you know that he's your family. If he calls you family, he's your family. And never missed a birthday, I just played you. The last year that he was alive, he called me on my birthday, I still have the voicemail, like I will never take that off my phone. Um, he was like, I like I know how much he loved all of you guys here. Like he talked about y'all so much before we met Georgina and anybody else in the house of Melanie. He always talked about them. And he said, like, I, those are my kids, those are my babies. You, you know he loved y'all like so much. And it's like when, when I met you, it's like I knew you already because I heard so much. 
But he kept telling us, like, he was like, at the point, this was like years ago, he was like, I want them, but they're not ready yet. So he just kept talking and he kept coming over here, he kept, and then he called us out the blue one day and was like, they're ready. So I was like, okay. So, and he, he would just like, he loved coming over here, like he loved teaching, like, it's weird how the impression that when you guys were speaking about him just now, like, I knew that he was impressionable, but to hear that he, like, spread that all over Europe and everywhere else that he went, it was really refreshing for me. Even though I know what great of a person he is, I've known him, like, 23 years of my life, so I really know him. And I actually spoke with him three days before he passed, which is like really morbid and weird now that I think about it. I didn't know that was going to be our last time speaking. And it's like, um, he's like no other person that I know, and I know a lot of people. But Vaughn, is, he's always been like this special person. And even when the thing happened with um, Allure, like just to give you a backstory real quick, um, the founder, Al, we had an issue with how everything was being ran because we ran the house. Al is the founder, you know, and he did a great job at founding the house. You know, we, we loved him, but we were doing so much as a board, keeping the house afloat, but he didn't recognize that. And he actually stated, like, I don't see any of you guys to take my place, even though we had already taken this place. So he had a tantrum. He was like, fuck it, the house is closed. So we had to make a decision for ourselves, like, are we going to just not be in a house or are we going to start our own house? Or we were even battling with him because we felt like we, we, we helped build that name up. So we were like, fuck that. You can't tell us that we can't walk under the name. It's our house, too. But after some thinking and long, you know, I actually, we actually talked to Vaughn because, you know, Vaughn's name is Vaughn Allure. Like, that's his name. So... But he told us, he was like, hey, listen, whatever you guys do, you guys are my fam, I'm going with, with you all. So there was a confusion because he kept the name because that was his business name, you know, that's his stage name. The allures were thinking, okay, he's still with us. But he made it clear that he was not, but that's just his stage name, so he had to keep it. So he wasn't in both houses, he was only in our house. He came with us when we left. But now we're all still family. Like, I still talk to Al to this day. I love Al. He's, he's my father. But I, we just had a disagreement because of how things were being ran and how, you know, Al is stubborn. I don't want to put Stanley on the uh, spot, but Stanley knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, oh, right, right, right. So, so Juan, Juan actually is... Um, Okay, the, the impact that one, one always believed in all of us, like even when we didn't uh, believe in ourselves, because like when I first started, I used to walk like Vogue Femme and Runway, and I was okay at it, I used to win, but I knew that my heart wasn't in it, and so Vaughn said, well, what do you really want to do? And I said, well, I want to walk fashion categories, and he was like, well, bitch, do it. He's like, like, what's, what's stopping you? And I'm like, well, nothing's stopping me. But, you know, back in the day, like, it was Stanley and all of them walking in the uh, Milans, the Pradas and all of them. That's, you know, the people that I came after. So it was like to see them do it, I'm like, can I do it like they, they're doing it? Because I'm going to have to measure up. And one was like, yeah, you can, like, do it. So I got with Arnold, who's my mentor, and we, we did it. But... If it wasn't for Vaughn, I probably wouldn't have moved on. I probably would still be walking Vogue film in Runway because I didn't think that I had what it, took, what it took, but he saw it in me before I saw it in myself. And, of course, now I'm legendary for fashion categories and an icon in the ballroom scene. So. Yes. Thank you. All All right, right, should brother. I pass it to Archie? Yes, please. I'm tired of talking. Um, my name is Keo. Um, been in the house since whew, two, <laughs> 2001. Uh, I met Vaughn around like 98, 99, same time as Sebastian. Um, he was already in the house before I was in the house. And so uh, one thing about Vaughn, um, he was one of the most like 
personable, his smile was infectious, his personality was infectious. And when I got into the house, I was initially walking Big Boy's Vogue. And so Vaughn used to churn out, this is back in the day when you were doing like the burn CDs and you had to take it to the DJ. Like, I don't know how familiar you, how familiar you, are, you guys are with The Wiz. Um, no bad news. Like, yeah, my first ball I walked, I walked Big Boy's Vogue with no bad news. And Vaughn was like, no bad news, uh, no bad news. And it was uh, one of Selvin's balls, Empty, Empty Deborah, but they got to fight and didn't have the category. So, <laughs> welcome to the United States. So, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that was my entry to meeting Vaughn. Um, and so I, I took a couple notes, I'm not gonna make this long. What I wanted to say about him is, again, that he was one of the most genuine people I have ever met in ballroom. Vaughn will let you know, give it to you straight, no chaser. Um, a couple things about him. He was a music library. You could just go up to him and say, what is that song? Like, dun 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 dun. Oh, Latina Cantina. Like, <laughs> anything if you hummed it he gave it to you and this was before shazam i'm talking about like yeah like all that yeah he was big old shazam just walking smiling shazam that's what he was okay and you know um you know and one thing about the allures when we were allures we were a small but powerful house and there's no shade like we were we believed in quality not quantity we only had one Vogue fam, Ricky, then we got J-Lo, and that was, and they sent the girls. Vaughn, it was like the, the, the traveling troupe. It was me, Ricky, Sebastian, Arnold, Vaughn. We would take it, if Vaughn was DJ, another thing is, get out of the way of his booth. If Vaughn can't see the runway, it was a wrap. Get out the way, and if he, if, if, if he could not see, he would stand up and flail his arms, stay out of Vaughn's way. Um, another thing was, um, so I remember when Vaughn started coming overseas and talking about the European scene. I've been in the ballroom scene since like 2001, so I've seen how you all started. And I remember when Vaughn started going over to Europe, hearing about Europe, seeing things on YouTube and things like that. And so I've watched it grow from a distance. So I've, I am a world traveler, but my first time I will say this, well, I have to say this. The way I travel, I go like to Uzbekistan, I've been to Moscow, Sri Lanka, and when I came here in 2019 for Pride, when I left, I was in tears. I said, you know what? This goddamn city, I've flown over so many times, there is no place in the world like Berlin. And when I saw Vaughn, I said, you know what, bitch? My God, and this is not even about the club. Like this, there's just an energy here that's so unique. Everyone's style. It's just, it's, it's just a vibe. So I just had to say that. Um, and you know, we shared like some personal kikis. This is like a one low key. I had a chicken, a real chicken. Her name was Paloma, and <laughs> and Vaughn used to ask about Paloma. We used to on Facebook. Uh, it was just always about. <laughs> Paloma. <laughs> she was eventually eaten by a dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But one thing, yeah, like one thing that we had for years that bonded us was Paloma. And so uh, it's just to see, see you all, see what Vaughn has left behind. Like this is his memory. And it will live on. And just like you all said, the things that you all have learned, this is a continuing scene. And they are passing his knowledge on to you all, and that is extremely important. So thank you for having me, and yes, let's have a good time tonight. Yes, thank you. RJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, ooh. Well, it's a funny story. So 2004, you know, Louis Vega and myself, we, we all kind of grew up together back in, in the day. Whoever knew Louis was going to be who Louis was, but, you know, so we started, he started traveling. And as he was traveling, he was doing these gigs. So he asked me to come to Italy. So I said, okay, bet, hey, we're going to come to Italy. This is 2004. So we come to this, this, this club, he said, Archie, 
over here in Italy, trust me, you know, they, they treat you like a king. You won't believe it. I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, watch. We're in the limo. We come around the corner. There's like streets of people running against the limo, trying to look inside the limo like it's Princess Di or something, you know? And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. He turned around and said, see? <laughs> the club had a car. I don't know what kind of car it was. It had a car in a glass case. That bitch was right in the front of the club. Inside it was dressed like Arabian Nights with like, like red velvet shit all over the ceiling. <laughs> so we start, you know, Louis starts playing, I start dancing. So here I am on the podium. I'm carrying on. I'm voguing. Now, it's Italy. The club was all white, right? There was no black people in that bitch, except for one. And he was down there vo looking at me, voguing up a storm. And I'm like, OK, so I'm saying, oh, wait. So you know, you figure you see somebody. So I'm voguing with him, too, you know? So then after that, you know, he gets up on stage. He gets up on the, um, the podium. Now, I didn't know the podium was for the Go-Go Boys. I was already there because, you know, anybody know me, if, if there's a beat, child, you know, it's done. So, and Louis wasn't complaining because, you know, I was kind of hyping up the record, so he was like right there. So I'm carrying on. So he's standing over here, and I'm standing over here, and then we're voguing together and carrying on. So later on, we talk a little. But here's the thing. He had a shirt, he had a jacket on the back that had his real name on it, Warren. And he had the hat, and he had the hat with a... Believe it or not, you know how those kids have in college the beer cans on? on so he had the hat with the beer can. And you know, and I still have that picture, too. I still have the picture. He had the hat with the beer can. So then, next minute, I said, okay, bet. So now, Louis doing a tour. So we went from one club, next day, to another one. We go to this one, and this one was kind of strange. It was kind of like a, on a boat. It was like, a, like do a docked boat that was a club or something. So I'm in there, we're carrying on. Next minute, I see, on again. I'm like, yo, you, you follow me? <laughs> we having a good time. After that, I did not see that man until Street Star. <laughs> and catch it. It was Laomi, Deshaun, Javier, myself. We are carrying yeah. on the stage in the after party. Because y'all know, y'all, if y'all were there, that after party was hot. <laughs> Juan was on fire. Juan was playing anything. So Juan goes like this. He's playing the thing. Then all of a sudden, I must have done something that he remembered that we did back in the day. Then one went like this. <laughs> you! You! I know you! I know you! And I'm looking at... Me? So then he starts to tell me how we met. Ever since then, thicker than thieves. <laughs> thicker than thieves. Same thing. He call you, talk to you, kiki, all that stuff, but it's the music. And he used to do this thing, and I know you know this, he used to do this thing. When he knows that you're into the music, he does this little thing with his eyebrow. <laughs> he pulls his eye, right? He pulls the eyebrow up and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm like, bitch, you about to, you about to do me in again. I, my best memory though is he played for my 60th birthday party. It was the best. We were in Finland. He carried, carried, carried. So I slept for three days after that one. That was good. But that's, but that's one. But that's one. I miss him. He's, he's, you know, I got the CDs. Let's see. What was it? Rampage, right? What was the other one? Uh, I think it was Allure was one. Rampage was the other. Um, the Street Star CDs. Oh, one last song. This is so funny. We're playing Street Star, right? So he wasn't supposed to play for the, um, for the, like the hip hop category. So the after party, well, it wasn't really the after party, where the kids warm up, it was the funniest thing ever. I come and I see these b-boys outside of the venue like this. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what's going on? Yo! That dude in there is killing us. <laughs> and I, I come in, it's Juan, and you know Juan always doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So now the B-boys are now begging him to play for the category, but they already hired another DJ, right? So the B-boys are like, no, no, you gotta let him play, you gotta let him play. Child, they let him play. It was a rap. They said, yo, who is this guy? Who is this guy? But that's one. That is one. Yes. So second question would be similar to what I asked um, the European people. Like, in your opinion, what is like the impact of one allure on the American scene in general, maybe your local scene, um, or people he mentored, or DJs? So uh, it's already been spoken, like his impact. So I'm from Los Angeles, but I lived in DC for like 20 years. So I'm from DC, that's when I met Vaughn. Um, I will say his impact is, it's global, but I wanna speak as far as DC. And this is something that you don't really see much anymore. One thing about Vaughn, uh, like Vaughn did not really walk that many balls. Like he would pop out at a latex, something like that. But what he did was he would Vogue with you at the club. And so one thing that does not really happen anymore, so we have Vogue classes, all that, I get it. And those are important, but one thing that I feel is a lost art is voguing in the club. And Vaughn, would, he wouldn't teach you, he would Vogue with you. Because when you would Vogue in the club, that's when your Vogue got its own personality. And you picked, yes, Vaughn would sit there and just Vogue down with you. And that was really big in DC because, you know, there was like this Vogue film, this Old Way, and Vaughn did Old Way, but Vaughn, yeah, people Vogue in film in front of him, he would do Old Way. And so I think that was an impact for DC, the club scene. Because the thing is, there really aren't that many spaces in the States anymore for the girls to hang out Vogue. Everybody wants to play hip hop or you get these venues with just one, one, one room and you have to listen to hip hop on, I didn't know though you 10 minutes of house music and the lights come on. So yeah, it's like, a, I think that's just happening across the globe in my opinion. So um, it may, yeah, but in DC. So um, as far as like his impact, teaching people how to Vogue and just exposing people to Vogue and the music, like the Von Allure exclusive, like everyone, and then like that is ingrained in, in you now, and so, that to me was my, my opinion of his impact, speaking from a person who spent 20 years with him in DC. Thank you. Definitely, and like all of the voices that you hear on the tracks is like his voice, yeah. right? So all of the whatever they're saying, like is anything and everything you would like, yes. <laughs> the best job. Yeah. Um, I can speak from Vaughn coming to Detroit, Michigan, uh, which is where I'm from, even though when I met Vaughn, I was living in Los Angeles, but I always went back home to walk balls and stuff. So Vaughn was like the resident DJ there because he, was, he actually would come to visit. He had a lot of friends up there that he just, you know, he would play at different clubs. So when we start, when the, when the ballroom scene came, he was like the person that everybody who had a ball, they flew him in to DJ because Detroit didn't have a ballroom DJ. We only had club DJs and they didn't know what to do. You know, none of us knew what we were doing. You know, we were just doing it. So Vaughn kind of came in and it, like, he doesn't get credit for it, but he should. Like he shaped that scene in Michigan. Like he really did because like I heard Kitty saying that you guys didn't know what to play. They didn't know what to play. And Vaughn was like, okay, if this is Thug Realness, you're gonna play this. If this is Vogue Film, you're gonna play this. Because honestly, the first ball we had, they played the ha all night. <laughs> For every category, it was the ha. It didn't matter what you were walking, it was the ha all night. No, it was the ha and uh, let's go, let's go. That's all, that's all they had, right. So when Vaughn came, Vaughn was like, so, so the first ball, he actually was just there. He wasn't DJing, and he looked at me, he's like, what the fuck is going on? He was like, this is Thug Realness. They don't, they're not voguing. I said, Vaughn, listen, nobody knows what they're doing. I said, if you want to get back there, 
you know, and and showed them, and he did it. You know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't even he didn't even ask for money or nothing. He was he just got back there and kind of showed it. So after that, he was like the you know the most sought after on DJ. Like nobody was we didn't hire anybody else. And it's like like his teachings and everything. Like even in the, in the ballroom scene now, like the the DJs that we do have back home, they all use his stuff. They all do. So it's like. And, and they all pay homage to him. Like, I have never met a DJ that said anything ill about him or, you know, nothing. Like, he was, and he always helped everybody. Like, he didn't mind, like, telling up and coming people, like, you know, maybe do this. And maybe, like, he wasn't even a, like, for some reason in the scene, sometimes when someone is doing the same thing you're doing, you, they get threatened by you or something, or they don't want to pull you up. You know, he was never like that. He he, like, he would show anybody. Like he was even trying to teach me how to DJ. I'm like, y'all, I'm not interested in that. That's not my thing. But <laughs> so, but I mean, sometimes at certain balls, like Vaughn was always working. So even though he was in our house, he would never be at the table and join us because he was always working. So you had to go to the DJ to be like, oh hi Vaughn, you know, and you go spend some time with him back there. One time he left me, he was like, I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. He was like, when this is over, just push this button. So I'm back there praying the whole time because I forgot what button he said to push. So thank God he made it back there before the category was over. I would have been shot. Yeah, so but it's like um, he definitely has impacted. He still does to this day. Like, you know, we, we still listen to his stuff. As a matter of fact, back home... Um, they did like a whole tribute to him. That, but it wasn't like nobody recorded it because it was like a prompt thing. It happened at the club. It was like three DJs and they like went ham with his stuff. And it was like, it was so much for me, I had to leave out. Like it was like that crazy. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. I left out because I couldn't handle it. And it was like maybe like a week or two after he passed. I wish someone would have taped it. I wish I could have because it was magical, but it would never be seen because nobody taped it. But that's just the impact that he had. And people, some people really never even met him. They could maybe say hi or something. But he infected them so much that it's like they still felt like they knew him. Even people that vote to his beats that never met him, they always say, oh, my God, I wish I could have met him. Because, you know, like, I listen to all of his stuff. Like, And it's crazy at the balls. They'll even say, like, can you play his mix? Like, I want to hear this song, but by him. And they could have never met him. So he definitely has an impact. You know, I know he's smiling down because, like, he, he, he was so humble of a person that he would probably be like, oh, you guys are doing too much. I wasn't all that. You know, he's, he was just so humble. But he has no idea, like, how much he really shaped a whole, like, a couple whole scenes. But I can definitely speak for the Midwest. Like, he really shaped us in a way that he would even never know. Yes, thank you. Yes. I have one last question for you, Archie. Actually, Mike Q should have also been with us tonight, but unfortunately, he's um, arriving tomorrow. Um, yeah, Mike Q, yeah. So Archie was in Europe a lot. Also, Stanley L. in the house. Just want to give a shout out, because, um, yes. Similar like Juan, you're one of these people that has been here and that has been so generous in sharing, so. I just wanted to also put that out there. Yes. And whole Europe. Like, you look at the L's in Europe and you see, and same like Juan, it was just super generous. Um, so, Archie, I feel like the question for you kind of goes both ways. Like, whichever you want to touch on, whichever is more present to you, like the way you feel that he shaped European borrow, because you were traveling a lot with him, you know, right? Or even from your experience in the US, but I know that obviously here. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I mean, one, obviously, he's a heartbeat. He's a heartbeat. Because no matter where he is, you feel him. And just like you said, he had separation anxiety. He didn't want to leave. You know, every time when the ball is over and he was like, Archie, I don't want to go back home. I don't want to go back home. I don't want to go. Because he just loved just being involved in the scene. I think what Vuan does and I say does because he's, he's still here, is, is he brings integrity to a scene. You know, he'll take the time to not only educate, but 
to 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 demonstrate. Like you said, you see him carrying on behind that that turntable when he's <laughs> when he's letting his head go and his hat fly and and all of this stuff. You know, he he's so in tune, especially when um, the first balls were happening here in in Germany. You know. He really, really made an effort. The funniest thing is one of the after parties, and you always feel it at the after party. Because at the after party, that's when he burns everybody at the after party. <laughs> the other DJs, they come in. Now, I'm not being shady, just for years. No, uh, the other DJs that, that come in, you know, who don't know him, they're like, oh, he's very gracious. Soon as he plays it, and the good thing is, I recorded that bitch. I have it. I have the evidence, you know. Next minute, they're there like, mm -hmm. he starts playing. And I'm sure you all have heard his special mix of Poison. Have you heard it? Bam, 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 ba, da, 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 poison. When he played that thing, you can, see, you can feel the whole room shaking like, like an earthquake. The man's ear is incredible, incredible. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so hurt that he's gone because he had so much more to do. He was starting to do old way tracks. He had told me, Archie, you know, this thing with the ha, I go to the ball, all the kids they want to hear is the damn ha. And I'm like, you know, no, I came with all this music and then I'm playing. So I'm thinking it might have been that event that, that you're talking about. And he said, no, no, no. So he got mad. He goes home. He makes the mix. And then he goes, so you want the ha? <laughs> Boom. And then he plays the beginning of the ha and then his version and then cuts it off. <laughs> what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? You're not going to get it. <laughs> he was very like that, you know? The wonderful thing about him, I, I have to honestly say, not only did he shape the scene, it's his friendship that changes everyone. I'm, I'm telling you. When you meet the guy, he's so humble, laughing, kikiing, but that generosity with that music, he will fill up that, that, that SD card like that, you know? He had a mix, uh, I think he called it uh, like uh, recently like something, Skate 1 skate and Skate 2. One. You got it? Yeah. It's over. It's over. He would do stuff like that, left and right. He was working with Shaka Khan. He was so happy when he did the, um, he had did uh, a, a thing with Gladys Knight, right? But he did an unauthorized thing. But Gladys Knight got in contact with him, and he was about to do the real thing with her re-singing the vocals. His rise was amazing. The thing for Empire, he did, he did the music for Empire, you know? I mean, he was so happy. And every time, you might say, uh, uh, a, a, a rising moment came, immediately he called his family to let them know. Man, listen, blah, 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 this is any other. So, you know, you can't help but feel happy for him. But like Sebastian said, he's in all of you. He's in all of you. Every time you play his music, you hear his heart. You hear his heartbeat. You hear what he's thinking. The first time I heard him play Bandit, I lost my mind. I was a street star. That man made me walk on top of a table. I walked across the judge's table, did a split, hold myself in the split and roll off the damn table in the split. That's what Warnalor does. Exactly, right? By the time you know it, you're sweating, you're huffing and puffing like, stop, stop. You're trying to leave and he said, Archie, listen to this. Next minute you can't leave. So, so all I'm saying is, is he, he will be missed, but his library is extensive. Extensive. If you get the opportunity, look up all of his music. You'll get to know him. Those who don't know him, you'll get to know him through his music. And it will change your life. It changed mine. Yes, it will. Yes. Thank you all for sharing this also with us here. Um, I will also um, share some of the mixes for those that don't have it, like the Skate Mix Part 1. It's like, you need two? I have it, yeah. The Quarantine Mixes, Dinner Morning, Cooking, I think there was the three. Yeah, they get me through the year on repeat at every workshop. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, I just want to also uh, take the time to thank all of you to come here and listen, because uh, I think it's very important. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for showing up for Juan. He would be very happy. Thank you to Sharon from Paris Ballroom TV for filming this whole panel. Yes, yes. Even Sharon was inspired by Juan because I feel like without Paris Ballroom TV, like the US scene wouldn't really know about us, right? Because which channel are they gonna watch to watch us? Paris Ballroom TV. They're like, what's happening in Europe, right? That's the clip you've been seeing, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna spill your tea because Sharon told me that Juan was the person also to be like, hey, you need to do this. The work you're doing is important. Thank you for archiving our community in, or your community in Europe. Same like um, Ballroom Throwbacks is doing in the US, yeah? yeah? So thank you for that work. It's very important to archive and also for archiving this panel for us. Yes. Um, so there's so much more that could have been said um, and we are going to continue the conversations because I feel like after doing this, this for me should be like an annual thing yeah. that can be smaller and different, but I feel like it has to uh, keep on going. There's the One Allure Forever page that is done by Elite Beats, who I hope that we can also connect and continue to do something. and. Oh, make make it louder for the future even and for the new generation that couldn't meet him to have these talks because I feel like everybody here would have a story that would be everybody that met him would have a story that would be like worth telling here on this stage right yes um, yeah so thank you very much for coming thank you for being here. Yeah. Don't forget to grab your cards. There's multiple back pages. Yeah, so there's not only one, there's multiple. And uh, for technical reasons, for this party to start, we need to clear the room once, yeah, to then have a re-entrance. If you are ballroom and do not have a ticket yet for the after party, come and see Litchi. Yes, we still have some reduced tickets available. And yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And we'll see you uh, at the after party at the Icons Galore Ball or at the Trans Identity Kiki. Thank you, Keo. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you, Archie.